In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make this cowl. It's called the Barber Pole Cowl. And if you'd like to get your free copy of the pattern to follow along, you can click here on screen to go to my website where you can download the pattern, or I'll give you a link in the video description field just below the video. Uh, this pattern I'm going to say is an intermediate level. It's um, maybe advanced beginner. If you're a really confident beginner and your knit stitches are even and smooth, then it's probably not too much of a challenge for you to move on to a fair aisle project. If you're still getting your, your knit stitches and getting your tension correct, this might be a little bit too advanced. But you can always try it on some scrap yarn and see how it goes. For this uh, pattern, I have used Yarn Sisters Willow Yarn, which is a cashmere blend, and it's just two hanks of yarn, um, and the cashmere, of course, is so nice against my skin. The um, construction of this is like one big hula hoop. Let me show you. It is a tube of cowl, and which means there are no wrong sides, and it looks good no matter how you wear it. it uh, is fair aisle, which means it's double thick from the fair aisle, and then it's knit in the round, and it's double thick that way too. So there are, like I said, no wrong sides. Um, and of course, in the cashmere yarn, it is really very nice. One note on yarn substitution, if you choose to use a yarn that is uh, not the yarn that I used, um, I'm going to really, really recommend that you stick with an animal fiber yarn. If you use a cellulose yarn like um, a cotton or a linen or an acrylic yarn, if you have any tension issues, those yarns will um, not be very forgiving when you go to block. On the other hand, if you have slight tension issues and you're using an animal fiber yarn, when you block it out, those things magically disappear or they're greatly reduced. Um, that's especially important if you have not knit Fair Isle before, and that's going to be part of this lesson, of course. Um, Another thing that I really liked about the Yarn Sisters Willow Yarn is that even though I used these dramatically different colors, there was no bleeding of the colors. There, it's, it was very color fast, because this could have been a potential disaster of a solid pink cowl instead of the stripes, like it is. So uh, everything you need for this project is in the free pattern, and next up we're going to get started with the cast on. Okay, once you get your supplies together and your free pattern, you're ready to get started on this cowl. And um, yeah, if you have never done Fair Isle before, this is definitely a good introduction to it and you will be a pro by the time you knit this whole thing. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the color chart that comes with the pattern. This is a very large version of the color chart and uh, you'll see in this pattern that it's just three stitches, three stitches, three stitches. We change color every three stitches in this pattern, and it's always just one stitch off each time, which, which creates the spiral. So when you break that down, this is what it looks like. Uh, if you've never read a chart before, uh, we're all, each stitch, each box represents a stitch, and because we're knitting in the round, and then the wrong side of the work is never facing us, we're always going to read from right to left every round from right to left, like this. So in the first round, you'll see uh, we have, you, of course, you can use whatever colors you like, but I have white, 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 red, red, red. That is the six stitch repeat all the way around. Um, so after you finish the third red, you go back to white, 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 red, 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 white, 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 red, red, red. And then on round two, you start with one red, three white, whites, two reds. And once you get to the last one, you start over again. Now to maintain this spiral shape, don't overthink this, don't overthink this, but to maintain this spiral shape, I had to um, write this pattern to be one stitch shy of a multiple of six. So that instead of, you'll, you'll repeat this all the way around, and then when you get to the end of the row, you'll be one stitch short of being able to finish the last six stitch repeat because it comes up in the next round. And that's what makes it so that it is, um, it's seamless without, with a seam and it. You, the pattern continues perfectly uh, from one row to the next and there is no beginning of the round anywhere where there's a jog or something. So you'll repeat this around, all the way around, 
to the last five stitches and then you'll knit one, two, three, four, five. There won't be one, the last stitch in any of these rows. Okay? This will also be explained in the pattern, or this is explained in the pattern as well. Once you get to the sixth round and you finish that, you go back to one. One to six, one to six, one to six. This is all you need. Okay, let's talk about the working fair aisle and casting on. I have written this pattern to uh, use 16 inch circular needles, which is what I have here. And I am using much bulkier yarn, much bigger needles than the pattern calls for, and that's so that you can easily see what I'm doing. If you are comfortable with the magic loop method of knitting, where you use a much longer circular cord and have extra cords sticking out, uh, you're welcome to do that. You can also do this pattern on double pointed needles if you like. I find Fair Isle to be kind of cumbersome on double pointed needles. Uh, it is easier with 16 inch circulars because you never have a break from one needle to the next. But it does work on um, with magic loop or double pointed needles. For um, the 16 inch circulars, there are enough stitches to just fit around on the 16 inch circular. I think we're casting on 71 stitches. And um, the first round, the cast on round, will be snug. You're going to have to stretch those stitches. It'll loosen up after the first couple of rounds, but I know that's something people email me about all the time. My stitches don't fit around on the circular needles. And I'm like, well, knit around and then get back to me. It'll loosen up. It'll get better. But the fact that things are kind of stretched around is actually helpful because it'll help you keep looser floats on the back of your work. Okay, let's pull the chart back into it. I'm on round one. I have cast on in one solid color. There's no reason to uh, cast on using both colors because this cast on round is going to be eaten up in the seam. No one's ever going to see this solid round. So with, we're going to call this color A. It's white on the chart. It's blue here. I put a marker here on the needle. I um, have my working yarn over here on the right side. I'm going to knit three stitches with my first color. And you see there, I didn't do anything fancy when I joined in the round. I just start knitting, and that is fine. Now I need to do three stitches in my second color. So I'll pull that color in, and this is how I like to do this. I put my needle into the next stitch, grab my next color of yarn, folding it over, leaving about a six inch tail, looping that around the needle, pulling it through. Then the next stitch you drop the tail. Nothing fancy, really just start knitting with it. Okay, so I finished the first part of the color chart. Three in one color, three in the next color. I'm ready to go back and knit three in the first color. And this is how I like to do it. I put my needle in, I stretch the stitches on the right needle so that this working yarn has a long way to go to knit that stitch. That's how you keep a nice loose float on the back of the work. It's only necessary for the first stitch. Okay, now I'm ready to go back to the purple color. I put my needle in, I stretch the stitches on the right needle to give this a long way to travel. One, two, three. See, I automatically do that. I stretch the stitches on the right needle. I did it before I remembered that I was going to say that I was doing it, <laughs> if that makes sense. Stretch, grab. Stretch, grab. Okay, that's the idea. It might take you a while to get um, some practice with doing that, but you'll get it. And even if you're kind of clunky at doing it, by the end of this cowl, you will be a pro. Let's talk about color dominance. Uh, I didn't used to believe in Fair Isle color dominance, but it does make a difference. I worked on one project where it actually made kind of a massive difference. You want to always keep one color running across the top and the other color running across the bottom. And to help me remember what I'm doing, I always keep the lighter color on top 
that's going to be the dominant color. And it's also helpful in the work because the dominant color is going to be more prominent in the work. I mean, the darker color is going to be more prominent in the work. So you might as well make it the lighter color. So when I'm knitting Fair Isle, I make sure the lighter color is always on top. And when I do that, I um, have my fingers in here looped around this way. This is just a guideline for how I'm doing it. knit with the top color, stretch it out, and then I flip around this way to knit with uh, the darker color. Stretch, flip around this way. Stretch, flip around this way. Okay, and I know there's gonna be more questions about exactly how I'm holding on to this. I have my first two fingers between the two strands of yarn, and then I'm just kind of making a fist out of the rest of the yarn this way. And uh, probably more convenient for people who like to wrap to do something like this, <laughs> where you have it wrapped around your pinky. I was sloppy with that because I don't normally wrap. Okay. Stretch, flip it around the other way. You will follow the pattern and continue that for the number of inches the pattern tells you to. Uh, one last note, if you are finding that your stitches really aren't stretching around the 16 inch circular needles, it's entirely possible that your gauge is off. Check the number of stitches you're getting per inch and if you uh, are getting, if your gauge is, is too tight, you need to go up a needle size, at least one. You can always go up a needle size anyway if you want things to be a little bit looser on the needle. Your yarn amounts might be a bit different if you do, but probably not by much. Um, next up, we are going to talk about seaming one end to the other to make the hula hoop. Once you finish all of the knitting, you'll want to bind off using a regular bind off in just one of the colors because like the cast on, the bind off row is going to be hidden in the seam. So if you have a solid color round, it's not going to show. And then uh, what I did next was I actually wet blocked it at that point. And I used a little bit of vinegar in the water to make sure that if there was going to be any color bleeding that it wasn't going to happen while it was wet that time and I didn't get any color bleeding like I said. Um, <clears throat> set it out flat to dry and then once it's completely dry then you can, you can seam it which is what I'm going to show you how to do now and then a bit of steam over the seam when it's finished and you'll be completely finished. But we have to seam first so let's go ahead and take a look at the pieces I have together here. Um, well let me show it to you this way. Pretend here that this is one long scarf, <laughs> much longer than this, in one piece, but I've done it in two pieces so that I can um, replicate how the seam's gonna work, something that fits on camera. And this, of course, is much bulkier yarn than the pattern calls for. I'm doing this so you can see what I'm doing. This is the cast on edge, and this is the bind off edge, and that's what we're going to be seaming, is cast on to bind off, which is a pretty easy seam. I've left the tail ends from both the cast on and bind off loose. I didn't weave them in or anything. And it makes it pretty easy to line things up. Uh, if you line these two up, you'll see that the spiral is lining up pretty nicely as well. So um, you're going to seam using one color. It's not going to show. All of the V's are running this way on both pieces. So when we pick up from the cast on side, we're going to go under both legs of the V this way. And when you pick up from the bind off side, you'll go under both legs of the V this way. It's essentially the same thing. It just slides to one side or the other depending on what you're picking up from. Now, um, I'm going to line this up and I'll be pretty confident that things are lined up perfectly. But don't get too hung up on this. If you are one spiral off like this, a little bit of twist in this scarf might even make it very cool. I'm curious to see how it looks if someone were to uh, seam a Mobius into it or to put a double twist or a full twist into it. 
I don't think you can mess it up. So to start seaming, well, let's take a close look at this. For the cast on row in one color, you'll see that you have a row of Vs that are in one color because the cast on that we use, the long tail cast on, actually, show, actually works a row of knitting. In the bind off, we don't have that. The colors are reaching straight up to the bind off row and it's only the bind off, the Vs running this way, that are in a solid color. So to make this look as neat as possible without anything, um, without the solid row showing, we want to skip the first round here and go into the colored round here, so the so or the Fair Isle round. So the solid round you want to skip, you want to start with the um, the Fair Isle round, because you don't want this solid color to show. Oh, let me see that a little bit. Well, let me demonstrate that. So I'm going to line these up. I am going to go under both legs of the first purple stitch that I see here. It doesn't really matter where you start, as long as you start um, with these two things pretty lined up. These two things meaning these two tails. So I went under both legs of this first purple V. I went under a second time. I'm going to jump over to this side and go under both legs of the purple V over here. Okay, now we're attached. I go under both legs of the second purple V. And go under both legs of the second purple V. Both legs of the third purple V. Both legs of the third purple V. Okay, I haven't tightened this up yet for a couple of reasons, and I'll show you in a moment. Now we're in the gray. Now staying in the same row of stitches, don't jump down to the gray that's closer to the cast on edge. Go under both legs of the first gray stitch, under both legs of the first gray stitch, second gray stitch. second gray stitch, third one, whoops, I almost went into the cast on row. Okay, now I've done a complete pattern repeat, three and three, and it's loose, it looks pretty good, I'm going to tighten it up, and the reason I left it loose to this point is because it's easy to see where you last came out of if you leave it loose, and I also just really like this magic moment. And you can see how good this looks now. The purple is going to run straight into itself. Actually, it looks a little bit off, probably because the way I pulled it. There's, it's not off. I know it's not off because I, I seamed the um, purple directly into the purple and the gray directly into the gray. I must have pulled on one side harder. And I can see that This stitch is a little bit loose, which it is my tail end for the purple. Anyway, I can find that later and tighten that up. But once you'll get all the way around and you'll get to a point where you just have a little bit of an opening left, just keep picking up your stitches, keep picking up your stitches and pull once you get to the very end. That, this is one place you really want to leave it loose. And then um, what I did is I tied one end of the seaming yarn to the other end threaded them both on the tapestry needle, poked them inside the cowl, and just pulled it through the work, and back out the work, and cut the ends. So the, the ends are knotted and kind of hanging loose inside the cowl. No one is the wiser. Because so obviously you can't weave in the end when you can't see the other side of the work, which makes sense. Just kind of push them in there. OK. Once you finish the seam, you can blast some steam into that and really pat it out. And uh, if there are any tension issues, you can straighten them out at that point. Anyway, I think that's the entire tutorial. Good luck.